man. <laughs> yes, unknown secrets of internet marketing. My name is Chris Boris, one of the owners of eWeb EWR or eWeb Result, formerly eWeb Result. Uh, I would say it's EWR now. Digital. <laughs> yeah, EWR Digital. No, I, I why I was kind of coming on going and eh, is we put a, a we put a little lead time into the video, right? To 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 kind of go with uh, when we hit the live button because there's a delay and we missed it by a little bit. So um, yeah, and I think that delay changes uh, or delay, delay or delay, either one uh, changes <laughs> from, from time to time, just depending on like internet connection and how quickly Facebook in interacts and all of those things. So yeah. well, we're tr we're trying some new things. We're gonna run a commercial in commercial. the middle. It's a little yeah, like so. This is a new thing. And like, you know, we're, we're building out kind of new products. Um, you know, we're also going to be probably offering some advertisements. So we're testing all this out. We want your feedback yes. uh, to know if this is something. Um, the video we have is a little long. Okay. It is a little long. It wasn't intended for this, but we want to test it out. Right. So we, we want to, and, and guys, also what I'll tell you is it's actually something you should use. Okay. Yes. Like legitimately we're using it with all our clients or encouraging all our clients to use it. Basically when COVID hit, okay, uh, our videography uh, team stopped, <laughs> okay? And, and, and so we worked on uh, a way to capture testimonials that um, you didn't need to physically be there because people are a little hesitant of that. Um, but I mean, this is awesome because it brings the cost down um, to get video testimonials and you need to get those on your site because we know how powerful they are but we'll get into that in a minute i know we're we're doing the second part of 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs seo right chris that's yeah that is the article we're covering and this will not surprise you we have a review before we get started this one is from patrick Lo, uh, lopez uh he's he's written a, a couple of times he's been a long time listener uh, so petit to you, Patrick. He says, I am forever grateful to DEWR Digital. They aren't, there aren't enough stars to give this talented company. Uh, from a person several years ago listening to their podcast and learning tidbits on their strategies, I can't thank them enough. Highly recommend this SEO company. Yeah. Petif. Petif. Petif to you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. All right, so we're, let's just jump into the right. So, twelve reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO. Before we get started on number seven, because we finished with number six, I just wanted to rehash number six uh, for one reason. And by the way, Matt, I'm going to have a, I'm going to spring a question on. Oh, no. uh, on number eight. Um, but uh, so number six, it says SEO best practices are always being updated, and that begs the question: like, how do I stay on top of the SEO? You know. Think changes, things that are happening in SEO. Uh, uh, well, here's one question. I wasn't planning on this one, Matt. How could they stay up on the latest SEO changes? Uh, well, um, Twitter, uh, following uh, the Google <laughs> webmasters on Twitter, uh, because basically they're announcing uh, what's going on. There's there are certain forums. You could certainly uh, listen to this podcast, oh, or you could, you could you could you could hire us. I mean, there's been. There's a big core update on mainly it was like speed, like customer experience uh, this month, which is affecting a lot of people. Uh, G and B, a lot of things are changing there. Um, you know, eat was a big thing, uh, kind of end of the year, going into the beginning of the year. So like we're constantly having to um, see how Google's responding and and uh, somewhere. Do what? Could they find an article by you somewhere? Uh, yeah, there. No, there's a lot of yeah. <laughs> um, what I would say is for eat specifically, um, we should have it on the website by the time you're listening to this podcast. Uh, we just we just finished it. We turned it into an ebook. Uh, we do have some articles on our blog uh, about it, uh, but we turned it into an ebook, an easy to read ebook. Uh, if you're following the best practice, and then here here's the thing: all the stuff that Google's telling you to do is stuff you should be doing. Right, like because they know from the, the data and the customer experience that you need that. So I'll give you an example. Um, when you publish a blog, you need to have a bio of who wrote the blog and some kind of data to support what they're saying, right? Like, like because they're like, who's saying this, right? And so it, it's kind of bringing back authorship. Um, when you look at a company like the About Us page, right? Like 
a lot of people don't have a picture of where they're located or their team or like people want to know that this is a real company. So again, these are things that you should be doing. And now Google's kind of like forcing you to say you really, really, really need to be doing this. So, um, but yeah, I mean, SEO is a, a moving target. Um, you know, the great thing is uh, we're really following all the webmaster guidelines um, and have been ahead of a lot of these changes, right? So our, 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 our clients have not been affected um, and we're continuously trying to find new ways uh, to improve just delivering overall value. But yes, absolutely. Uh, the fundamentals of SEO are the same, but you know, the tactics and what Google's looking for, they readjust those dials uh, and you have to stay on top of it. I mean, one of the big changes I saw is like location pages uh, or service pages used to rank. Now they're putting a lot more weighting on the homepage now, um, kind of moving back to that. Yeah. Um, and so they're testing some stuff out, right? So we'll see what they do. Uh, yeah. So that's six, they're always being updated. Make sure you stay up to date on them. Number seven is understanding SEO helps you understand the environment of the web, right? So if you look at the amount of search traffic that is, excuse me, the amount of web traffic that is driven by search, it's the majority of web traffic. So if you're spending time understanding search, search engine optimization, then you're spending time understanding what's happening on the web, right? And the majority of web traffic. Uh, and, and that's a really important thing to understand. Well, I mean, the term SEO continues to expand, right? There's YouTube SEO, um, you know, conversion rate optimization can be considered SEO. It's basically a blend of like marketing, right? Like what I actually see happening is because you have all these different mediums and these different tools, marketing is actually going to fold under digital marketing because actually digital marketing analytics and, and how we're doing things are actually more important than traditional marketing, in my opinion, uh, and a lot more powerful and a lot more data driven and understanding where your money's going. And like, there's just so many different advantages. So basically marketing is becoming digital marketing, which is just good marketing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Marketing, marketing, marketing. No. <laughs> and understand that from a search perspective, Google's always focused on the user. And so if you're following the guidelines of what Google's interested in delivering for the user, then you're going to do what, like it improves your business because Google isn't going to say things like, oh, the website should be slow. No, it needs to be fast. Is that good for your user? Is that good for your business? Yes. People need to be able to find stuff easily when they get on your website and not come back to the search engine to try a different website or the search result page to try a different website. So all of those things, if you understand all of those things, you're going to be constantly improving your business. I, I mean, the, la, the la, uh, old school point would be like SS, you know, the, the, the SSL certificate, right? Like, like, should your website be secure? It wasn't secure. Now Google's like saying it really should be secure. Yeah. <laughs> is that a bad thing? Like, and Google gives you a nice bump if it is because, you know, it doesn't want its users getting, you know, hacked or whatever, right? Like virus. Um, so uh, again, the things that Google's doing are the right things um, based on the data to create a better customer experience. So people continue to use Google and find what they're looking for. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Number eight is SEO is relatively cheap. And here's my trick question, or just a question. Matt, is SEO cheap? Well, uh, define cheap. Um, I think that uh, SEO um, is once you get SEO moving, right? It's kind of like getting in a jet stream um, uh, for where your keyword placement is. But if you want to move uh, real estate wise, uh, you're going to have to do things to move it. Now, once you're in that place, you kind of glide there, kind of ride the jet stream a little bit. Um, but everybody else is trying to maybe compete with you, right? And so uh, we've seen in all digital campaigns, SEO is the majority of the search traffic, the majority of how people come to the website, the majority of uh, ROI you're going to get from um, you know SEO because it's not a dollar for dollar kind of trade off, right? You're not spending a dollar to get a dollar twenty or dollar fifty or whatever it is, right? So uh, now cheap SEO uh, is quite dangerous, okay? And uh, ultimately expensive, yeah. 
And, and, and if it tanks your website, ultimately very uh, expensive. And a lot of websites come to us where um, you, you just can't take shortcuts. Okay. Like you, now you, you need to find a company that really understands what they're doing. I did uh, just publish an article in Forbes about how to find an uh, enterprise SEO company. Um, so go check it out. Type my name and enterprise SEO. But anyways, um, what I can tell you is um, if you're doing it right, like, like let's talk about this and I'm sorry not to mean to go off on a tangent, but basically um, when you do something right, like if you're building an Ikea table, <laughs> okay. And you follow the directions, right? You read the directions, you follow the directions and you do it. Is that faster than trying to do it on your own, putting things in the wrong spot and then having to like rebuild the table, which I have done. Okay. Like I'm, as a personal example, and hopefully there's some other people out there that, 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 uh, you know, can relate what was faster. Right. And so, uh, if you understand the framework and you understand what you're doing and you do it, um, you don't want to cut corners and you only have to do it like right, like once right now there's some ongoing stuff with SEO you do. And that's why people are confused, you know, one time like technical or some certain on page stuff or whatever like that. But then there's ongoing SEO too. And there's off page SEO. So there's a lot of different moving parts here. Um, and like, you think you can allocate like a couple hundred bucks to, to get it all done. Now it depends what, industry you're in, it depends how competitive it is. It depends what your goals are, right? Um, you know, there's uh, operating online, there's certain fundamental thing, things that you have to do and be aware of. And, you know, being online and having a website's one of them, but also if you're looking to generate business online, there, there are certain standards that you have to meet. And so uh, doing those kind of web maintenance things have, have an expense to them. Having an up-to-date website, has an expense. And once those things are in place, now you can start doing the SEO. You can't do SEO on a bad site. Uh, if it's slow, it'll pop up and it'll drop. And, or, or you can get people to it and it's a bad site and people will leave and based on uh, how people are interacting with the site, Google will go, uh, now we don't like this and it'll drop you. So again, like depends where you're at on, on how expensive it is for you. Um, but, uh, Cheap SEO, I would be super careful of, and you need to know what they're doing. If you don't understand what they're doing, they're doing some stuff that could get you in trouble with Google. And I would honestly stay away from it. I think the main thing is not cheap, but transparent. Okay. Yeah. Don't look for cheap, look for a transparent company to explain it to you and to understand what you do. And that's, you know, that's really kind of how we um, view things. And and how we kind of view the world. And, and again, that's why we do this podcast is to try to provide that transparency. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you may have at some point implied that a couple hundred bucks might work in some industries, depending on competitiveness. I just want to throw in, no, <laughs> a couple hundred bucks, no matter the industry. Yeah, <laughs> it may take some of your time and therefore no actual dollars out. But if you value your time, you're going to be spending more than a couple hundred dollars worth of your time yeah, yeah, I, I'm. You I, I mean, competitive industry. Like, look, like, I mean, look. This is my frame of reference. SEO, online marketing, it's investment. Now, you know, take dollar ad spend out there, but getting everything set up and all that. Like, you should be thinking if you're a small business, a micro business. I'm telling you, you, you like 20k, 25k is like actually what you really need to get started. Yeah, you know. And really, like the ability to do things uh, changes with money and the plan changes with money. But yeah, like if you're not spending enough or it doesn't equate to enough time of uh, an expert working on your site, um, it, it's not even worth it. Okay. Because unless you get on the first page of Google, like midway up the page, it doesn't even matter. So if you're moving from page 10 to page five, like you, you're just throwing money away. Right. It might be better to move that money to remarketing or, or, or something like that. But, you know, like AdWords, you used to be able to get a long way on a couple cents. But now clicks are multiple dollars, you know, hundreds of dollars sometimes, um, you know, really where we're seeing a lot of opportunities in streaming, um, uh, streaming videos. Uh, and of course, SEO, again, SEO and, and putting those all together, you get this multiplier effect. So. 
you're right. It's not, it's not cheap. <laughs> well, it, 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 you said it, you said it the right way, right? If, if you look at it as an expense, you can have less expensive marketing, but yeah. marketing is not an expense. And it's one of the challenges that a lot of business owners struggle with is like, oh, I got to cut expenses. Let me stop marketing. No, marketing is an investment and should have an ROI. And I think if you think, I think what people really want to understand is SEO cheap. Yes, it actually is relative to the ROI. You're not going to get a better ROI from another marketing strategy. Uh, that's just not going to happen. Um, it, but but you may have to spend a lot of money on it, but it's cheap because it's a it's it's the best investment. Well, one of the things I think are key, right? And depending on what your KPIs are, if it's getting people in the store, if it's getting people to buy our, your product, you're trying to figure out what your customer acquisition cost is, right? And then testing that out on different channels and going, where, where should I be putting my marketing dollars? And what is that customer acquisition cost? And how do we get that number down? And does that number work with my business model? That's really what you should be doing. You should never be looking at it as an expense. Yeah. Okay. You should be looking at it of like, like if you're wanting to grow or whatever it is, like what, what does it take to spend to get a client? Like, and then how do we improve that number? And that's all you should be thinking about, honestly. And that's how you should look at it and go, okay, well, if I spend this, I get a client, you know, like and if, that's a number, metric, so. and, and if I spend this and get a client, if that's the right number, then you figure out how to do it over and over again. I was thinking about like a stock portfolio, right? Let's think about your marketing in terms of a of an investment like a stock portfolio. How about crypto? Right? <laughs> and if everything what? How about crypto? How about crypto? <laughs> your crypto portfolio. In, yeah. in general, stock portfolio. Let's just say you invested in some traditional marketing, which really doesn't have the traceability uh, that a digital marketing has, and you see your account going up. But you don't know if it's the radio ad or the TV ad, or you don't know if it's the radio ad on this station or that station. And so now you're in a situation where you're like, well, I don't know where to shift my investment dollars because I don't have this ability to track it. Now you look at digital marketing strategies. Even SEO is a little harder than track. You can, I think that's coming up, up here pretty soon. Um, uh, so I won't go into it very much, but, but you can track it. And then you can say, oh, well, now I know I should shift the money here because that's where I get the biggest bang for the buck. And that's, you know, that's where we get into digital and ultimately the biggest bang for your buck in the S in the digital marketing world is SEO. And Chris, I'm going to have to stop you there. We have a sponsor. OK, oh, we have okay. a sponsor, which is us. Um, <laughs> um, but it's it's a it's a, a product that we launch, a SaaS model product we launch. Um, it's working quite well. Uh, and people are very happy and it's, it, we're, we're seeing a lot of reoccurring buys. It's, it's great. I opened up my email and, you know, all these people are signing up. So we wanted to offer it out to you. So, so again, you know, if you're looking to build trust and increase conversions on your website with the current amount of traffic you have, because that's a good use of your dollars too, is maybe I don't need more people. I just need to improve my funnel. Um, protestimonial.com protestimonial, you should check it out. So just listen, um, you know. Tell us what you think, uh, but we will do shorter ads, but but I think actually this really lays out a story good. So here we go. Pro Testimonial, your one-stop shop video marketing tool that captures and creates video testimonials in simple, quick, and cost-effective way. Did you know that 90% of consumers say their buying decisions are influenced by online reviews? And that 79% of shoppers say they trust online reviews as much as recommendations from friends and family? That's what makes video testimonials so powerful. You might be launching a new business or have an established one that needs some visibility, or you have a new restaurant that needs community endorsement. Maybe you're a real estate agent looking to connect with people buying or selling a home, or you're just looking to capture video testimonials for your organization. Whatever the case, Pro Testimonial does it all. Video testimonials are more important than ever in today's competitive marketplace. So how do you quickly and easily capture those reviews and have a produced video ready to share? That's where Pro Testimonial comes in. So how does Pro Testimonial work? Well, it's really as easy as one, two, and three. One, identify and reach out to your client or customer who will be happy to provide you with a video testimonial. 
too. Send your client a request through your pro testimonial account. Then all they do is simply click on the link in their email and record their video testimonial in 50 seconds or less with a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Three, pro testimonial makes magic by adding your logo, inspiring music, and your call to action at the end. And that's it. So sign up today and receive a 14 day trial to see how pro testimonial can work for you. Boom. Boom. That's a commercial. I'm going to tell you one important piece for anybody who just watched that is it is so easy for the customer to use also, right? So the focus of that commercial was like, hey, one, two, three for the, 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 the business. But when that customer gets it, they don't have to download an app. They just do it right there on their phone or right there on their computer, laptop, easy, because it's got it definitely has a camera built in. That's pretty awesome. I also got to say, I love the pizza logo. Like, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just add your logo so, so we do commercials okay we're doing commercials we're doing modeling shoots we're doing a lot of different types of videos we're winning awards we just won the award last night oh, you know boom nice. and this is for product packaging for my vital c cruise so and you're that's using pro testimonials yeah so we're doing all kinds of fun stuff over here and uh you know reach out to us maybe we can help you grow your business if you're a big business and you're spending a lot of money and you're not seeing ROI and need help, give us a shout. All right, let's get back into this. Number nine, SEO. And this is 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO. Uh, number nine, it's a long-term strategy. SEO can have a noticeable, Im noticeable impact within the first year of action being taken. SEO time, effort, and budget uh, that is committed to it it makes it, it your website last longer. It makes it stand the test of time and a market worthy contender. Um, talk about like you, we've got a couple examples we've mentioned before uh, about long term impact of SEO and maybe a client who's no longer with us because they have too much business in and where they're doing. Well, a lot of a lot of how we do SEO um, is is really it sticks like it, it really uh, sets in place. There's a lot of different shortcuts again uh, that people can do that that won't uh, stay. I, I, everything we do is is really um, uh, like I don't know. I don't know. What, uh, I don't know. For I don't know what the right word is, but uh, like we'll stand the test of time. But bottom line is what I think. Oh, that's cool. What I think the answer is here with a long term strategy is you need to have a strategy because if you have the wrong strategy, the kind of keywords you're going to get, you need to get the site to rank are not the, the uh, commercial intent keywords you need. And, um, you know, you've wasted a bunch of time to rank for a keyword that actually is not going to help you. And so I think really what I'm taking out of this is you need a strategy, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, SEO takes uh, some time to work depending on where you're at. It's very, um, you know, variable. But if you have the wrong strategy, it will not work. Yeah, like, It will not work. So you need to have a strategy. You need to understand where you're going. You need to understand what you're doing. And then again, um, what you're talking about is the long-term impacts of it, where you get these huge ROI numbers. You know, I mean, we have clients and case studies of like 30X, you know, return on investment. I mean, so so again, SEO is an investment. It takes a little bit to ramp up, but if your business model is built around generating clients online um, or driving people into the stores or, or whatever it is, uh, and you want to utilize digital marketing, SEO should be that foundational piece. And you got to have the right strategy. I mean, strategy is so important. So well, one of the things I did before we hopped on this podcast was did a search for bankruptcy Tempe uh, and our client who we got there two years ago is still position three. <laughs> so that still re that still has an ROI. The ROI you can't complete. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it, like coming in. I mean, it's Bitcoin ROI there. You know. So, yeah. 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 All right. So next, a uh, twelve reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO. It's quantifiable. Um, so SEO doesn't offer the easy, and we talked about this, the easy to calculate ROI like that of paid search. Right. It's a little bit different. But brands want to know and understand. Uh, where they were, where they are, where they're going, and you do have the you do have that visibility with SEO. At, at a minimum, you have that with your search rank, like where you're ranked for the phrases you're targeting. Well, so so we had a client, and, and I'm working on this. We haven't put it together as a case study yet, but but essentially, uh, a client that we weren't managing their site um, got hacked, 
they came to us. Okay. They were in first position. Okay. They dropped down. How do we get it back? And this client was freaking out because you could actually, he could actually see in his numbers what first position versus fifth position versus ninth position worth 11 position was worth to him. Right. So we know how much traffic it gets. We know roughly what the conversion rate would be. We can see the conversion rate analytics of your site. Uh, we can quantify what the value of that customer is to you. So you can actually add a quantifiable number uh, within a range of what you can get. And if you're in a certain margin of error, it's really like a no brainer. Okay. It's just really a no brainer. Um, you know, and, and that's, uh, I think that kind of step that customers need is they need to be able to see that they need to be able to understand that impact. And, and yeah, you got to think about it a little differently, but it's so powerful. So well, I think when, when you're talking about no brainer, it's kind of like, Hey, Matt, would you like to be in the first position for your carpet business? Uh, no brainer. Yes. But there's a difference between having that no brainer understanding of yes, there's value in that position. And then the no brainer understanding of like you just described, I understand the revenue impact of position one versus five, nine and second page. Like that is, that takes your intuition to a level of understanding, which is like, okay, what does it cost to get me to that first position? Yeah. I mean, when you, when you understand that and you see it that way, um, it's like, why haven't I started doing that sooner? Yeah. Right. And I can't tell you how many clients um, I'm seeing, like, if you want to stretch your marketing dollars, okay. And you have a, a decent size budget, like, and you're spending money and you're like, man, I'm spending a dollar and, you know, I'm getting a dollar ten, and I really need a dollar twenty. I need a dollar thirty. I need actually, I need like two or three bucks for that one dollar, or whatever the number is. And and you can optimize ads to to a certain point, and we're certainly good at that. We just hired somebody out of Google to do that, um, or to to join the team that we were already doing that. But like, I mean, like really good. Okay. And so, anyways, um, like you can only stretch it so much, right? Um, you, you need to change the paradigm shift. Like you need to change how you're thinking about it and how you're thinking about uh, marketing is that's when you bring SEO into the conversation. Yeah. So, yeah. Really from the beginning. Um, all right. Number 11, SEO brings new opportunities to light. So this is interesting. Like, okay, let me read this. Let me understand what, what he's saying here. Uh, offering quality SEO to brands means submersing an SEO team in everything that is the brand. The better a brand is understood, the more opportunities will arise and help it thrive. Uh, and, the, and that's true, like with our team, when we're going in to understand your business, to understand what we need to do from an SEO perspective, that's when we understand stand your brand. And the better we understand your brand, the more we're able to present and, and, and have that brand be expressed through the, not just the website, but the marketing, the paid ads, just everything across the board. Yeah. I mean, I could go off on this topic for a really long time, but I know we're, um, Is you it know, because it has brand and your first book was built. Your brand my, well, my second book rise the first right now, but so, um, no, I think that SEOs helping uncover searches that better match it with the pages right and and also it's a lot about how you're telling your story and getting your message out there so where are you at in the customer journey for what searches are you producing a piece of content that you want to rank to 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 have that touch point on the customer journey right and so um seo oh i'll, I'll give you an example one of our clients um uh, basically, the company's broken up into two, and there's one that goes after the retail market, one goes after the commercial, like B2B market, right? So we've started to do SEO on the site, and they're like, what changed? Because we're getting all kinds of inbound now that is commercial, which we've never like gotten before, right? And so we unlocked some keywords based on uh, some of the offerings they had that, well, one, wasn't, inde wasn't being indexed in Google, um, or wasn't relevant enough, Google felt, to, to show it in the SERPs. Um, and so now they're showing up for keywords and they're getting calls. And so it's unlocking those new opportunities, you know? So. 
SEO good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And number 12 of the 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO. By the way, this article is by Sam Hollingsworth. If you're not on page one, you're not winning the click, right? This feels like it goes without saying, but a recent study shows that the first three organic search ranking positions result in nearly 40% of all click-throughs, while up to 30% of the rest on page one and two don't get clicked at all. If you're not on page one, you need to be, this goes, like we were just talking about that. I don't know, you probably don't even need to add any more to that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just interesting. You can cut the data a lot of different ways. So the top three positions get 40% of all traffic, while 30% of all results, page one and two, don't get clicked at all. Yeah, I mean, basically he's giving you the inverse of it and he's yeah. giving you like the bottom of the first page and the second page, like don't even matter. Like again, middle of the page and up is where you need to be, so. Yeah. All right. In conclusion, in implementing strong quality SEO on a brand's website and digital properties is always going to be beneficial to that brand and its marketing efforts. Like, uh, yeah, we, we couldn't yeah. agree with that more. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in my hardest college exam uh, ever. And when I would read the problems, the way my brain worked, and it was like, Da, 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 solve this and my brain was like yeah that's right like it's obviously right like why would anybody waste time solving it in <laughs> a lot because that was my job in that class so um you have anything else no i don't got anything no you, you yeah yeah i think that was enough i think we delivered yeah, I, think, I think we offered a lot of value in yeah. the podcast and if we did please uh leave us a review leave us okay. a review please what's the link matt i don't I think uh, ewrdigital.com forward slash review will get you there. Review or reviews, one or both of those will work. Um, hey, this is the end of our podcast. We want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you you know subscribe. Make sure you follow. If you're on YouTube, smash that subscribe button. Smash that notification button. We really appreciate you. You guys have made us one of the most popular internet marketing podcasts and the most popular SEO podcast in the known universe. Uh, we appreciate you. Until the me next time, my name is Chris Burris. My name is Matt Bertram. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>